Okay, so for this video, what I really want to do is um, review the different file path um, approaches that we can take in Linux. This is useful for midterm, final exam, um, in your professional life if you are working with Linux in your professional life. Um, so we sort of introduce these ideas over a couple of weeks, or at least I do, um, because it's kind of a new environment. So this is my way of kind of just summarizing how everything uh, works out. Okay, so let me drop this over here. You may have seen this uh, in our first week. This was me trying to explain different ways of moving around. And I'm using this diagram at the very bottom here to try and illustrate how the Linux file system works. Okay, at the very top, we've got root. That's the very top of our file system. Um, there's no more parents after this. And uh, let's say that A could be our current location. So at the beginning, we introduce these two uh, file path approaches we can either be um, selecting a file path based off of where we are right now or we could start at the very top of the file system and work our way down so um, let's call them relative and absolute file paths okay if our current location is a we have two ways of getting to b we have a relative way and we have an absolute way so the relative way in this case is the longer way because we would say cd dot dot slash dot dot slash b. If we're using the absolute approach, we would just say cd slash b. Okay, so this is relative and absolute. Relative is always going to be, um, you're always going to be defining a location or a file path based off of where you are right now. So the way that it looks is it's going to look something like this. You might be using um, dot dot to define a parent directory or you might start by talking about a um, subdirectory that you have in your current location. I'm in my course notes right now so I could be using this. Okay. So a relative file path is always going to either start with a name of a subdirectory or a current location or um, maybe parent, so dot dot, something like that. Absolute will, um, the thing about absolute is that it never changes. So no matter your current location, um, it's always going to be the same. So in our situation of using B, I would use something like this. An absolute file path will always begin with that symbol for root, okay? Because you're always defining from the very top of the file system down to something else. So, and that brings us to, finally, the third approach, the third and final uh, type of file path that we're going to talk about. And um, what I'm going to do is just log into our um, school matrix server right now. And this is just freshly logged in, right? So you should know by now, every time you log in, your current location is going to be your home directory. If I do a PWD, I'm going to see that my home directory is slash home slash Eric Brower. Notice that this is a absolute file path, okay? So when we are using home, or relative to home file paths, I should say, you're always going to be using uh, this special symbol. The symbol that we use is a tilde, okay? In my case right now, my tilde is my home. So your home is going to be different, obviously, because you're not logged in as me, um, but basically, this is where I am. So if I'm going to use a relative to home file path, I'm going to say something like cd tilde slash public HTML, and I could go there. All right. But it's always defined by my home directory. So everyone got that relative. You're not going to see any special symbol at the beginning, but you might see dot dot or a name of a subdirectory. 
absolute, you're always going to see it begin with a slash. And with relative tome, you're always going to see it start with a tilde. Okay, so now there's a couple of different things that we can do. Um, you know that I'm in my home directory, home slash eric.brower. So if I use a relative file path to move into my parent, I am in home right now. I'm going to take a look at all the people who have a an account on the matrix server and um, I, you know I could move into different ones or I could try to move into different ones I think what you'll find is it doesn't always work like that so if I'm talking about a user that is not me and I want to look at their stuff basically um, the way that you do that is with a tilde again but instead of a tilde you are typing in instead of a slash I should say rather you are writing the rest of their username basically so when I do that I'm going to try to get in there and I get a message that um, my permission is denied so I can't do that or if I was trying to go into slash um, uli 101 so you'll recognize this as being the directory where uh, your assignments are stored this is where they are um, this is where we keep them. Um, if you try to take a look inside, you will notice that you don't have permission to look inside this directory. So here's where we get to see some of the um, kind of really convenient and really sort of um, feature rich permission levels that we have in Linux. You have permission to open and execute files in this location but you don't have permission to look inside the directory so that's useful for us you know like if anybody is administrating this this home right now um, you know they can do things without any students seeing the inside of it um, and that's very useful so similarly um, I have set up this directory called ULI 101 when I am looking at it I am looking at my home directory and then I am looking at ULI 101 okay and I can see that I've left a bunch of uh, convenient stuff for you guys to play around with and some different examples that you can look at and things like that um, and the path that I give you to be looking at stuff like that was tilde Eric Brower so when you're logging in under your username, your home is different from mine, okay? But tilde eric.brower is always going to be pointing at my home directory. And then after that, I have uli101. And then you can cd into there, move that around. I can move over here and I can go over here and take a look at it and see the contents of it. Um, so for example let's say that you want to move this um, maybe maybe you want to do some reading I have this uh, you know public domain um, version of Frankenstein or the monster of dr. Frankenstein whatever it's called it's under Frankenstein.txt so maybe you want to get some reading done while you're waiting for matrix things to work the command that you would use is you are looking at my home directory um, the subdirectory for that is ULOI 101 and you would type in frankenstein.txt and you would want to move that into your home directory and that's the command that you would use to do that so I hope that clarifies things um, just remember that the way that we begin these file paths is different absolute always starts with root relative to home always starts with a tilde relative you don't really see that but you can see parent slash something or the name of a subdirectory.